WMMR music from RTZ until our love, till your love comes back around. Pierre Robert, our guests today, Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau, have known each other since they were teenagers. They used to play at go go bars in an area of Boston known as uh, the Combat Zone. Well, one of us did. One of you did, okay. <laughs> and after a series of uh, local bands, they hooked up with Tom Schultz, formed Boston. Um, their first release became the largest selling debut album ever. And in 1981, after leaving Boston, Barry uh, did a solo project and also formed Orion the Hunter. Brad, after the last Boston album and tour in 86, uh, rejoined Barry, and along with Tim Archibald and uh, Dave Stefanelli and Brian Mays, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, got them all yeah, right. yeah. formed RTZ. Their debut album is out. It's returned to zero on the giant label, and uh, we're happy to welcome Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau to uh, MMR. Nice to have you, lads. We're happy to be here. Welcome. Boy, we didn't have homework, to. We didn't, didn't have to show, though. You see, he knows more about it than we do. <laughs> That's Good great. To have you. What is the combat zone of Boston? May I ask that first of all? Uh, it's pretty much gone now, but huh. uh, it was uh, an adult entertainment area. Uh, 
you know, back when I was a teenager, they uh, had a lot of clubs where they had bands playing. <clears throat> they had uh, women in uh, cages doing the uh, go-go dance. You know, it wasn't it wasn't strip joints. It was, uh, you know, fairly legitimate at that time. But mm. later on, the uh, girls took their clothes off, and they didn't need bands anymore. So <laughs> the uh, the music part of it went out the window. Huh. But uh, that that area is pretty much closed down now. Chinatown kind of expanded and took it over. Huh. So you don't necessarily miss it then? Uh, no. no not really. <laughs> How did you guys come to form RTZ? Can you tell us that? Well, uh, as you mentioned earlier, I was out with Boston in 86 when uh, the third stage record finally was completed. Uh, prior to that, Barry and I had been working on some material uh, with the hopes of getting something together. And again, when this uh, when the Boston thing was completed... I uh, took a leave of absence. Barry continued working um, with the other, the work, other guys work, work. in the band. So the roots of it had formed even before the third yeah. Boston album. Yeah, tour. although we didn't have a name or anything for it. Uh, when I got finished with that tour, uh, these guys had been working with a couple of different vocalists, one of whom moved, and uh, the other one didn't quite work out for whatever reason. So they were looking for a singer at that time, hmm. and uh, I was anxious to, to sort of get back into it. Hmm. Um, when we did get back together, we it was a very casual sort of thing. Barry's got a studio at his house, and uh, we weren't we didn't have an eye so much for uh, getting a record deal as we we just wanted to get together and say let's just play stuff that we like. As a matter of fact, we didn't really didn't even approach anyone until we had what we felt was an album's worth of material together uh, because we didn't want it to be shaped. We didn't want to go to the label and have them say, well, you could sound a little more like this or that. So when we had 10 or 11 songs together, uh, we then uh, approached a couple of labels and said, this is what we do. If you like it, great. Was, it, uh, was there an immediate interest? Did it take a while? Um, well, I think we were very lucky uh, coming from the background that we did that there, I think there was an interest even before they heard the tape. So that can be good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, but sort there were people a, uh, that were curious because of coming from boston i think there was some interest there mm. but we were happy that uh, when we gave them the tape they seemed to be enthusiastic about the the music which of course is most important yeah are you happy that the album came out uh, not according to anyone else's um designs or concepts other than your own yeah i'm very happy i i couldn't do it any other way i, I just don't see any point to it um so, yeah, that was one thing we really pushed for all along was to have control. We went in and talked to a number of producers until we found someone that, that we were comfortable with. How do you pronounce his name, your producer? Uh, well, yeah, it's Chris Lord Algy. Okay, I was wondering because uh, the you hyphen want, there. You want to say Lord Alge <laughs> or something, but uh, it's Algy. And, and, and what is his background guy. in producing? He produced That actually record. comes from a family of producers. His brother uh, produces uh, Steve Winwood. Huh. Then he has another younger brother who is a producer as well. So all, all three of them uh, are uh, pretty popular producers. Hmm. Yeah, it, it worked out great for us because uh, he heard the tapes that we did and he said, boy, this is great. I'd like to just re-record it, get a better recording and maybe get the performances better and, and go with it the way it is. And that's exactly what we wanted to hear. Hmm. Mm -hmm. what was so he didn't to try us to... Is to... To make the record we wanted to make, not the record somebody else wanted us to make. Now his influence was not then to try to shape it away from any particular uh, No, well, he's musical. He plays drums and he plays some keyboards, so he has a musical background, and, uh, and I think he was helpful. He made some uh, suggestions you know, that uh, we uh, did make some minor changes. Arrangement-wise. Uh, Arrangement-wise, but if he made a suggestion and, we, and the band wasn't into it, he said, fine. Hmm. You know, he didn't, didn't what, no pressure. Hmm. We're speaking with Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau of RTZ at 93.3 WMMR. Uh, now, this album was recorded in California, I understand. Uh, yeah. With the exception of the song we're about to play, where some of the guitar was recorded in your house, Barry, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I was really pleased with the way it came out. If I had known it would uh, sound so good, I would have done uh, most of the guitar work at home. <laughs> Actually, I did it in about two hours. I really? just pulled, you know, brought a tape home, threw it on there, and... Uh, it was a flash, did it in a flash. So the the tapes were already going, and you just did this particular track in your home yeah, studio? Yeah, I just transferred it to uh, the 16 track, which is what I have at home. And uh -huh. uh, 
I played my parts on that tape, and then we brought it back to the other studio, and then just transferred it back to the other machine. Huh. This is Face the Music. Would you guys like to uh, say anything about this particular song? Uh, well, uh, see, usually uh, I write the music and Brad writes lyrics. Uh, this song, I wrote lyrics, and Brian Mesa, keyboard player, wrote the music to the lyrics. So in that way, it's uh, different than the way we put the other songs together on the, on the record. Cool. Well, let's play Face the Music from RTZ at 93.3 WMMR, Philadelphia's home of rock and roll. And we are joined by Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau of RTZ. WMMR Face of Music from RTZ. We're joined by Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau of the band. Uh, are you guys uh, concerned at all about being compared uh, to Boston? <laughs> no? Well, it's inevitable. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously. although I don't think the album sounds like Boston, but you're, you were the vocalist for Boston. Well, that's what I like to hear from people is, gee, that doesn't, really doesn't sound like Boston. I, it wasn't a conscious decision one way or the other how it was going to sound any more than you know, this is pretty much what we do. I think it is, uh, it's a little different. Reason being, 
uh, most of the material on the Boston records was written by Tom Scholz, and I, I would not hesitate to give him, you know, all the credit for coming up with that sound. This is this is what Barry and I do, so it's I think it's different for that reason. Hmm. I'm I'm curious if this band, to the both of you, has a feel, uh, and I don't know what the inner workings of Boston were, but uh, uh, he was such a dominant force in that band. I'm wondering if if um, this feels more like a band effort as opposed to one person who's kind of creating this and setting the stage for it. Uh, and again, I don't know that that necessarily was a case with Boston, but it sort of from the outside in looks like it might have been more that yeah, way. Yeah, I, I think you could say that. Mm -hmm. In the early days of Boston, it was more of a group effort. But uh, after the first record, uh, uh, Tom started doing a lot of the, uh, you know, recording and playing himself. And uh, I think after the first record, uh, the rest of us didn't feel, you know, as much a part of it as we did at first. But... Uh, yeah, this is very yeah. much a group effort, and uh, although Brad and I wrote most of the songs, Brian Mace, our keyboard player, wrote uh, "Until Your Love Comes Back Around," which is uh, the new single, and uh, the other guys in the band have uh, input in, into the uh, arrangements and so forth. So, oh. yeah, we're we're buddies, you know. Cool. We have fun doing it, and we really started off, you know, just having fun playing, and and it came from that rather than, well, let's make this kind of band if we. All right play these kind of songs these kind of people will want to buy it and you know we, we just didn't get into that at all no demographic studies done <laughs> well fortunately we've we've been lucky in that uh, you know with boston we had a, a very lucrative uh, career so uh, we've got the uh, luxury of being able to do that so that is a luxury compared to uh, any other band that's you know starting out yeah it sure is uh, and also as i mentioned earlier from the standpoint of uh, working with the label uh we had a little more weight <laughs> to throw around uh, uh, in terms of making decisions of what the stuff was going to sound like. A lot of new bands are not afforded that opportunity. Mm -hmm. People may not be aware of that, but some oftentimes there's a lot of control. A band gets in and they got all these ideas and they got these songs and they want to do this and the label says, well, if we could just bring in, uh, you know, Diane Warren for maybe just one or two ballads <laughs> and we'll get this. And, the, you know, and, you know, not that those people don't can't write good songs, but uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, it's easy for someone's, for the band's personality to get lost. Is the uh, label supportive? Do you find them? Because it seems to me in this uh, day of, um, mm -hmm. of when you sit at the radio station, we get a lot of new uh, releases in, and and different labels will come in with the, the different release. And it seems like uh, I, I equate it often to a, a plant or a little seedling. And if it's a young band that's starting out, they, they, they give it the amount of water. If they don't see immediate growth, they have a tendency to toss it out the window in general, not always. But then if they see more growth, they add more water in terms of the support that the label gives. Um, do you find that you're getting enough water? <laughs> well, we've, we've got a young band and a young label, too. It's a fairly... Uh fairly new label uh, it's through warner brothers but of course irving azoff uh, left mca records to start giant uh, -huh. uh and the last boston record w which i was involved on uh was for mca so i had known irving through that uh, we i didn't i didn't get into the uh that end of it all that much that i saw him a great deal mm. so uh, i think we're both trying to get our feet off the ground here at the same time so you agree with that, I, I think Barry? most labels realize that uh, it's really long haul nowadays to to uh, get a record started. We were just talking when we were off there about the recession, how people are real leery of spending any money, and I think they realize that if it doesn't hit in a couple of months, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to happen. Yeah, this so. record has in fact had a, sort of a second life because it was released a while ago, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, the, latest, the latest the latest single doing is doing better with it now than uh, when it first came out. Huh. Well, that's we great. noticed that when we went out on the road uh, back. Last November, I guess it was, we went out for about six weeks, and and I had a lot of fun. We got on the bus and we went out and we did clubs, and uh, coming from playing the Spectrum and you know places like that to doing just a uh, camera. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> uh, was really great. It's like a it's like a building process, you know. That's not and discouraging the, to you then to do something. No, like I that. took it as sort of a challenge that way. Mm -hmm. And this this is a new project, and I wouldn't want. Uh, if we could have hordes of people that were coming just to see the guys from Boston as opposed to a small number of people that had heard about RTZ and were interested in it, I think I'd rather have the smaller amount and try and build on that. Hmm. Well, when, uh, during the tour, did you play Boston songs? or We did a couple. 
um, the the main reason we did it was sort of out of appreciation for people to coming out to hear the new stuff. So it's mostly RTZ, but we did uh, a song that I had written on one of the Boston records, and then we did another song, a uh, long time as a matter of fact, which featured Barry's guitar. Uh, he played the guitar solo on yeah. that. So, and those are fun to play, and the other guys in the band enjoyed playing them because uh, they were kids, actually, when, <laughs> when those songs came out, and they used to play them in other bands. <laughs> So uh, so it was fun to do that, but we uh, obviously we didn't put the focus on that. Right. We, we do those for encores. Cool. Yeah. We're joined by Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau. Uh, you guys could hang out for a minute. We'll come back and play another song after sure. uh, these messages from the new album. Everyone is... Uh, there's a number, isn't it? <laughs> 93.3 WMMR. We're joined by Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau of uh, RTZ. Now, you guys uh, uh, came down from Boston this afternoon, and I understand you're on your way when you leave here to another event. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Um, or if not, <laughs> if you do, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an AIDS benefit. That's but right. I understand we have someone on the telephone. Tony, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, Tony, you're involved in this uh, event that's happening later this afternoon, right, with uh, Brad and Barry? Okay, this is happening Actually, it's on Sunday the 16th. Sunday, right. I'm sorry, okay. That's okay. Sunday the 16th at 7 o'clock at Crazy Jeans in Summers Point. Mm -hmm. We're doing a South Jersey uh, Eighth Alliance, and we're going to have a uh, rock and roll auction with some memorabilia to auction off to raise money. And all the money that we do raise will be uh, left in Atlantic County, Salem County, Cumberland County, and Cape May County. For the Eighth Alliance, it's going to feature uh, obviously RTZ as our headline, and we also have Flame and Harry, Billy Falcon, and Steve Forbert. Hmm. Now, all these folks will be stopping by to uh, auction stuff off. Is that correct? Correct. Plus, we have some stuff from uh, Aerosmith and uh, some other bands, the Guns and Roses, U2, and Southside Johnny Guitar. Hmm. Wow. And all the money that's raised through the auction is going to benefit our the South Jersey Eighth Alliance. And what's good about it is the money is staying locally; it's not going nationally; it's staying in South Jersey. Hmm. Great. And uh, I'd like to thank the guys for coming, to tell you the truth, because that made a real big headline for us before cool. we had the show planned anyway, but they just, you know, put it over the top for us. Great. Well, we appreciate it. We're happy to be a part of it. Uh, are you guys bringing stuff to auction? Are you just going to go there and sign autographs? or? Uh... Uh, I think we're going to have some uh, CDs and sign some autographs. Cool. All right, Tony. Well, uh, how can people get uh, get attend if they want to go? Okay. Well, i got a couple of numbers if you don't mind. It's sure, go ahead. Good. If they want to go in, uh, at person at Crazy Jeans, the tickets are $15 at the door. You must be 21 to come in. And where is this located again? Crazy Jeans is in Summers Point, on the Summers Point Circle, just before you get into Ocean City, New Jersey, okay. right on the waterway there. Uh, tickets can be charged over the phone, if you like, at area code 609-561-7515 or 609-348-2437. Give me those numbers one more time. Sure. 609-561-7515 or 609-348-2437. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you, Tony, for calling in. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you there. We'll definitely see the band there. Do you guys know what time you'll be there, by the way? Do you know it's on our core? 7 p.m. The show starts at 7, yeah. They're going to have the, like I said, the bands will come on first. There'll be an auction between sets, the breakup while the bands are tearing down and setting up, the auction will take place between sets to keep the evening moving. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, Pierre. All right. Bye -bye. Good cause. Thank you. You guys like to do benefits? Are you involved in a lot of benefits from time? Have you been over the years? Yeah, we have done quite a few. Uh, again, not so much with this band because we haven't uh, had that much uh, time to go out and play, but we did quite a lot with Boston. One of the things I really liked on the, on the third Boston album is uh, as you open the inner sleeve, um, apparently, you and Tom are both vegetarians. Yeah, I have been for about uh, oh, twenty-two years or so. I guess. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, and right. and uh, I really liked uh, your listing of animal rights organizations. And I'll uh, credit Tom for that. That all the liner notes and everything were were uh, his ideas. And of course, I was, you know, concurred with them. But uh, I give him the credit for uh, putting in those plugs where he did. It was cool, though. You also listed uh, environmental organizations, mm -hmm. Greenpeace, and things like that, right. and, and told people who uh, bought the album how they could get involved in stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, those were things that, that uh, Tom felt particularly strong about. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so you'll be at this this AIDS benefit Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Right. Okay. You're not actually going to play, though. That's uh, No. No, okay. You'll just be there signing autographs with CDs and stuff like that. Tell me about the town of Boston. I mean, you, you both grew up there. 
And for people, some people consider Northeast cit- cities somewhat similar, Philadelphia, Boston, New York, although every city's got its own flavor. What about mm-hmm. it strikes both of you as, as the reason that you still stay there, given that you could probably live anywhere that you wanted? Well, I moved. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I didn't grow up in Boston proper. Uh, okay. I lived uh, on what's called the North Shore. Actually, Barry and I both grew up uh, just north of Boston, in the kind of in the suburbs. But I moved to New Hampshire since then. Yeah. I, I still live within an hour of Boston. But um, I think the good thing about Boston is it's really a college town. I yeah. don't think people really think of it in those terms. But uh, it's really a musical place because there's still a lot of places for bands to play. A lot of students that are going out to to see acts, and it's really a vital uh, musical area, which, you know, a lot of places, uh, there's just no clubs to play anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, Boston, there still is, and there's still quite a few bands coming out of Boston. Extreme, for instance, they... uh, came up through the club scene in Boston. All right. The Cars did the same thing. Yeah. Aerosmith, I guess yeah. you could even go. Are, Aerosmith are you... played just about every high school, I think, in Massachusetts at one point. Or really? When they were getting started, yeah. Uh, so do you guys, uh, are you friends with other bands in the area? Do you, do you yeah. hang out from yeah. time to time? Yeah, we uh, know the fellows in Aerosmith. Uh, back when we were trying to get signed, they, they actually got signed before us and had a record out before us. So there was kind of a friendly competition there at first but uh once we get signed and uh, had some level of success uh i think we kind of you know saw eye to eye whatever actually you went out on tour with them with uh yeah my orion the hunter band went out uh, on tour opening for uh for aerosmith back we played the uh spectrum spectrum yeah yeah. well let's play another song from the album uh um Which one? You, did, you picked this, Brad. Didn't yeah, you? Living for the Rock, for and, the roll, rock and Roll. One that doesn't get played as much as maybe the others, but it's, it happens to be my favorite one on the record. I guess just because I was happy with the way the lyrics came out. It actually, it's a story, and it was roughly, uh, if not completely literally, uh, figuratively anyway, how I felt, I think, growing up. Okay, this is RTZ, Living for the Rock and Roll at 93.3 WMMR.
RTZ, Living for the Rock and Roll. We're joined by Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau from the band. And uh, you're on a little promotional swing right now. You yeah. guys uh, have a couple kind of, of things coming up. a little spur of the moment thing. You, we mentioned yeah. that on, uh, is it Sunday, yeah, Brian? They'll be at, at the uh, the AIDS thing. Where is the location again? Crazy Jane's in Summers Point. Crazy Jane's in Summers Point, uh, New Jersey, stopping by as part of a rock and roll auction, although you will not be playing there. But that's uh, benefiting the AIDS um, Alliance in South Jersey, I believe. Right. Now, tomorrow, if people want to actually see you and get uh, autographs signed, that is also possible, right? Yeah, we're uh, going to uh, three tower stores tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so as I understand it, you'll be at the tower on South Street at 11 tomorrow morning. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your new tour manager. We'll be there. <laughs> uh, tower Great. on South Street at 11 a.m., then you go up to the Northeast uh, Tower store, and you'll be there at 12.30, and then over to Cherry Hill, New Jersey, for their tower records uh, there, and you'll be there at uh, 2 p.m. We will. Our best be. estimates, yes. yes. Or, or thereabouts. <laughs> Give or take. Uh, so, Same day. if you, yeah, so, uh, the world tour, the uh, Philadelphia mm-hmm. area tour. Uh, you enjoy the promotional process. You enjoy talking about. It's fun record. to meet people. It's fun to talk to people. Uh, I, I don't like to get too self indulgent about it, but uh, yeah, it's it's all a part of it. Yeah, I don't, what, I don't know if it's quite comparable to to plan, but. <laughs> what about meeting fans? What is that like for you guys? Uh, that was great. Last time we went out. Uh, you know, I had done a couple of records outside of Boston, and uh, they were relatively successful, but not usually successful records. And uh, I had people coming up uh, at all of our shows saying, geez, I've got those records, and I listen to them all the time, and I, I really like them. And that, that was, it was really important for me to know that people got into the records and, and still, still enjoy listening to them. Liked your solo project in Orion the Hunter yeah. and that yeah. sort of thing. That is cool. That's rewarding for an artist, I would mm-hmm. suspect. Yeah. Uh, what kind of things do fans say to you when they when they come up and chat? Do they have particular questions oh, that they uh, want to ask? Can I have your jacket? Uh, <laughs> will you buy me a drum set? Yeah, yeah, well, we used to get that actually, but uh, no, people are pretty. You know, I, Barry and I are uh, almost too down to earth. <laughs> Sometimes I think there's no real no uh, kind of rock persona there. So and. People, oh, wait, so people are people. So well, you have, yeah, you have a yeah, tremendous rock persona, but. <laughs> Did uh, it, did when you guys started getting successful and and I mean the first uh, the Boston debut album was the best selling debut of all time and all mm-hmm. that did that uh, have a tendency to swell your heads at all or were you overwhelmed by how fast that that sort of came on I think uh, the latter is what happened and everything was just moving so quickly that we didn't even have time to think about it till we got home mm-hmm. we were uh, when the first record came out we were supposed to go out for about six or eight weeks to see how things were going and I think we just we stayed out, must have been 10 months or something. Mm. The tour just kept going and the, the venues got larger and just never stopped. But again, uh, we really never stopped to think about it either until it's till we were all too exhausted <laughs> to do anything else. When we got home, we Collapse. had a chance to reflect on it. Huh. When you left to Boston, Barry, after the second album, um, were, you, were you just feeling at that point that it was time to move on or uh, were you... Were you wanting to experiment with other things on your own? Uh, well, the second tour was kind of a pressure cooker because, uh, you know, the first album was so successful that uh, there was a tremendous pressure to, to follow it up with the second album. And then we went out and tour, and the second tour was even bigger than the first one. We were out for... 14 God, months or God so. Knows wow. Over a year. Wow. And it was a real pressure cooker, and uh, Tom and I weren't getting along particularly well, and... And uh, he told us, well, I, I don't think I'm going to be working for a while, so if you guys want to do something else, maybe now's the time. And it seemed like the right time for me to go off and, and do something else because I knew it would be quite a while before he'd uh, do another record. Hmm. What is he doing now, do you know? What's he He's working to? on another album, actually, with most of the guys, uh, actually all the guys from uh, the last tour, from the third stage tour. Hmm. I think um, things worked out very well. They're very enthusiastic you know, uh, I'm very helpful on the last tour. So they are, they're in the recording process now. I haven't talked to Tom for, for quite a while, so I don't know exactly where they, what stage they're at. Hmm. No will you, intended. <laughs> will you uh, join that project? Uh, uh, well, I've got my hands full with this. Um, at the moment, we're planning on doing another RTZ record, so the likelihood hmm. is that that's, that'll be the game plan for Is me. the project he's working on, will that be called Boston, or...? Uh, I would certainly assume so, yeah. Uh, 
I mean, in my mind, but Tom is Boston anyway. I've always <laughs> felt that way. He's, I mean, he's has very specific ideas about what he wants to do, and uh, you know, I would just give him all the credit for that. Mm. Even the, the the vocal sounds and things. I did the singing, but oftentimes we would just go over and over and over until we got, you know, just what he was looking for. Mm. Well, uh, we wish you guys all the best of luck with this, uh, with the new project, RTZ. Will we see you on tour again? Because you were here like about a month and a half, two months ago. Yeah, I, uh, I hope so. We're what do your to touring get... plans call for? Uh, actually, we're looking to go out um, next month. Huh. Uh, Will that think, be clubs again? Might, or? Yeah, I think we're going to go and do some, some club work. Uh, there was talk of us playing Long Island. I think that's the, the closest uh, to here right now, but... Uh, You'll hear about it. Okay, great. <laughs> well, Brad and Barry, uh, we'd very much like to thank you for coming by. And who gets to pick the next song? <laughs> oh, well, I picked pick the last one. one. Barry, you can pick this one. All right, one. Barry, you get to pick it. We've got about, 11, to, 11, and we've played uh, three or four already. about uh, Every Door is Open? Every Door is Open. CD song yeah. number six. Nice this, uh, guitar, this is actually the, uh, the first song that Brad and I put together uh, when we started working together again huh. for, for the RTZ project. Mm. So. Every door is open. Well, again, the very best of luck to you. We hope we see you again when you come through. And uh, Thanks, hope so. And again, I want to remind folks that you'll be at the Tower Records chain tomorrow doing a whole tour of the chain in this area right. on and South tour. Street, give or take, tour around <laughs> 11 in the morning, tomorrow morning, uh, Saturday morning. You'll be at the Tower Records in the Great Northeast, give or take, around 1230 tomorrow and over in Cherry Hill at 2 p.m give or take tomorrow and then on sunday at uh what's it called again crazy jane's crazy in jane's point. in summers point new jersey around seven in the evening uh being there that's to a club stuff. by the way not somebody's house right <laughs> <laughs> for an auction for crazy the aids alliance in case our relatives are listening <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for coming by guys thanks for having us Appreciate 93.3 wmmr this is music from rtz here at the home of rock and roll
Philly's home of rock and roll, 93.3 WMMR. Every door is open from RTZ. Their debut album is out on the giant label. And uh, we've been pleased to welcome um, Brad Delp and Barry Goudreau into our studios here at WMMR this afternoon. Uh, they've uh, been through a couple months ago. They were here in Philadelphia. They played at the Cabaret doing a club tour then. And I think they'll be uh, back out on the road on the club scene in another month or so. They just told us, and it's very nice to have them in. Playing stuff from the new album. It's on the giant label. I would again remind you if you are uh, fans of theirs and would like to check them out. I've written it down here. They'll be uh, sort of on a little promotional swing through Philadelphia tomorrow, Saturday. You can see Brad and Barry at the Tower Records on South Street. They'll be there about 11 in the morning. Then they'll be heading up later in the afternoon to the Tower Records in the Great Northeast. They'll be there around 12.30, give or take, you know, depending on how long each uh, store appearance takes. And then they'll be over in Cherry Hill at the Tower Theater or Tower <laughs> Records there. Uh, at about 2 p.m. So Tower on South Street at about 11, up in the Northeast about 12.30, and over in Cherry Hill at Tower Records at around uh, 2 p.m. They'll be signing autographs of the new album RTZ. If you have any old Boston stuff, I'm sure they'd be happy to sign that too. You can stop by and see them there. And then they'll be at uh, Crazy Jane's in New Jersey and South Jersey as part of a benefit for the AIDS Alliance on Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, they'll be stopping by to uh, sign some more stuff from RTZ. So we thank them for coming by.